Hey everybody, it's your man Joe Mont2694, and I've got a bit of an announcement to make. I am retiring from doing the Ruby Chibi reactions. I have followed all the rules. I subscribe to Rooster Teeth first, and yet I still get shit on when I post anything related to Ruby Chibi the day it comes out for first members. So then I go and don't upload until the day it comes out on fucking YouTube, and we still get a copyright strike. So I'm done with Ruby Chibi. I'm not done with Ruby. I'm gonna be doing Ruby React when season when Volume Five comes out. But Ruby Chibi just isn't worth my time anymore. So Django, no more Joker Hawk. You're fucking Thank welcome. You. not expecting you to say that, to be honest. Well, at least no more Joker Hawk pertaining to you. Oh. So... Hey, if you want to give Nonzo a hard time with that shit, be my guest. <laughs> well. So, for those of you out there who are now going to be wondering what I'm going to be doing, I think Ruby React is just done at this point. When they stooped one of my favorite, two of my favorite characters to putting on those goddamn mustaches, I about wanted to punch my computer. And I was just thinking to myself, well, I can't do a chibi reaction to this because I'd be duty bound to do a whole Joker Hawk thing and you'd bite my head off and it would be hell on Delta. And so I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. This is turning into way more effort than it's worth for something that might not even stay up anyway. So... Basically, both me and Django were saying we're done with Ruby React, which effectively means Ruby React is done. Completely. As much as I hate to, you know, ab abandon something that I was actually enjoying doing, but with this copyright strike, for whatever reason, it just... I mean, it's... it's got, it, I've even been starting to think about it the last couple of days since you mentioned it. Oh. Um, if that was just only recently with the, with, what was it, episode 16, 17 or whatever? Yeah, something like that. And then, and then we get, we've been, we did all of, what, season one of Ruby Chibi it without, without an issue? Yep. And then Rooster Teeth changed their rules, we started following them, and then we get a strike against us. Yep. God, and that was that was episode sixteen or seventeen. We were almost through season two. Yep. Yeah, it sucks to quit, but it's just a matter of wanting to keep the channel going and not risk it. Yep. Especially because we just recently hit the point where we could start monetizing the videos. We got to like 10,000 views or something, so we could finally start monetizing, or maybe that was the gaming channel. Either way, we're in a bit of a precarious position right now. Anyway, getting back to what I was trying to say, I have three new ideas that I'm going to start working on, uh, one of which is going to be coming up very soon. The first project that I'm going to start working on is what I like to call... The Weapons Vault. As you all know, when it comes to pretty much any kind of video game with a variety of weaponry, the only thing I really care about is the weaponry. That's why I like the new Doom so much, because it gave you so many options. That's why I like Borderlands so much, because it, there's bazillions of guns. To me, it all boils down to give me the most ways to kill something and then let me make them dead. Same way with swords, same way with guns, same way with anything. So I figured I'd make a series detailing the weapons of both movies and video games that have been iconic. Because as much as a lot of people don't want to admit it, weapons have just as much character as the people wielding them. You can't say Dirty Harry without thinking about his 44 Magnum. So, that's the... Uh, Mace Windu, or Star Wars and Mace Windu and his purple lightsaber. Something like that. Or Captain Price and his 1911. So, that's the first idea, is the weapons vault. The second 
is going to be specifically for the gaming channel, which is going to be me taking one of my, I will say it's one of my favorites, The Division. A lot of people don't like it. I personally really, really, really like The Division. It got really hard to play around the middle of its first year, and they added some fixes that made it playable again. And there's actually a lot of facets of the game that have been added since it was first released. At its core, you know, it's a third-person cover-based shooter, but it's... Like Gears of War meets Destiny, right? Yeah, Gears of War meets Destiny. In a modern image. Yes. Sorry. But once again, it's got the concept of more guns, more ways to kill shit. So I'm going to do an analysis of all the different like mechanics, the story, because there is actually a story. As much, as much as people like to bitch that it had less story than Destiny, it still had a pretty good story in my opinion. The fact that it has Tom Clancy's brand on it, I mean, that just adds a whole nother layer. So I'm going to be doing a, you know, I'm going to be doing analysis on the game. I'm going to be doing a sort of like Rooster Teeth's things to do, except it's not going to be things to do because I don't want fucking copyright again. Basically, I'm just going to do all things Division, especially because a new free update is coming out soon that adds a new area to the map, which is going to add new game types and an aircraft carrier to explore. So I'm especially happy because Navy. So that's my second thing that I'm going to be working on is becoming Agent Hawk, Second Wave Strategic Homeland Division, New York. Ha 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 ha. Finally, in honor of Halloween next month, I'm going to be working on something throughout the entire month of October. Something very near and dear to my heart. And something I absolutely hate. <laughs> Here's all I'm going to say about it for now. I want to play a game. <laughs>